Hello, everyone. My name is Juan Cabrera. I'm the Extension State Specialist for Vegetable Production with the University of Missouri Extension, and I'm a research faculty at UMKC. Today, I'm going to talk to you about pros and cons of hydroponic cropping systems. Let's dive in and talk about some of the advantages. If you manage to control the environment, provide heating, artificial light, and you have a structure to enclose the, ha the crops, you can have year-round production. That means that you can access better prices for most of the produce that you can grow hydroponically. Another advantage is that since the plants are not stressed fighting off the environment and pests out in the open, you can have shorter crop cycles. For example, hydroponic lettuce will take anywhere between 35 to 45 days from seed sowing to harvest in hydroponic systems compared that to uh, field production of lettuce that can take on average 70 days. Another advantage refers to food safety. Notice the two pictures there at the bottom. You have higher risks of contamination when you're growing out in the field because you cannot control wildlife. Wildlife can get in there and they can contaminate your produce without knowing. And this is reflected in some figures that look at the CDC website that relates to the number of food outbreaks related to leafy greens. There has been a total of 54 foodborne disease outbreaks from 2014 to 2019, all of them related to field-grown leafy greens, and none of them were linked to leafy greens that were sourced from hydroponic farms. That doesn't mean that they're devoid of risks. You still need to have a strong worker training program to prevent risk of contamination. Another advantage is that it allows food access, for example, in urban areas where you have limited availability of land. And there's many reasons why land can be limited in urban areas for farming, for traditional farming. Uh, but mostly is because it is more profitable to develop the land instead of farming it. Sometimes you can have contaminated sites that will not allow you to grow safe produce. And sometimes you have zoning restrictions. You cannot farm larger areas before having restrictions in terms of zoning in urban areas. So that means that uh, hydroponic systems are very adaptable and they lend themselves to areas where you cannot grow crops traditionally in the field. And this allows for the development of hyper-local food system networks. And with that comes fresh produce that has higher quality because it is harvested and it is consumed quickly. It doesn't spend too much time in storage. And for those of you who are not aware, the nutritional value of produce is lost over time. The longer you keep them in storage, they lose those beneficial compounds, even if the produce looks okay from the outside. Hydroponic crop systems are very efficient in terms of how they use the water, anywhere from 90 to 98% more efficient in terms of water use compared to traditional field crops. And if you live in urban areas, water is a commodity that it is pricey and efficiency is the game if you want to be a successful farmer in urban areas. Like I mentioned earlier, there are highly adaptable systems that you can set up in urban areas where you can grow traditional in the field, and this can help you address the issues with food deserts in, in urban areas. Another advantage is that they have higher yields relative to field crops. This is an example of uh, hydroponic tomatoes. Currently, the average is about 448 tons per acre. But notice I have another number there in parentheses. The 448 tons is the marketable produce. And the A71 is the total output in terms of tons per acre. Compare that to figures from uh, field production, I've seen growers reporting that they can get anywhere between 15 and 40 tons per acre. In terms of the amount of resources that they need, like I mentioned earlier, you have higher yields. That means that you end up needing less land to meet the demand. So you need low land requirement because you have higher yields. It is highly efficient. Um, research papers out there report uh, efficiencies that go anywhere from 92 to 98% more efficiency in hydroponic systems relative to field production because you have um, issues with water percolation, water runoff, and evapotranspiration. So you have more control over those parameters. However, since you are controlling the environment, you have systems that they require more energy and you have to invest in infrastructure and equipment. So you have a higher costs because you have higher capital investment, higher infrastructure use, and you also have higher energy use. 
And the question is, so we saw that yields, they're higher. Why is it? Well, it's because you are always keeping the plants in their comfort zone. You're able to control those parameters that affect the plant's comfort zone. Also, you have varieties that are specifically tailored for these kind of systems, for example, indeterminate tomatoes. For those of you who do not know what an indeterminate tomato is, it's a type of tomato that it keeps bearing fruit after putting out the first crop, as opposed to determinate tomatoes that the plant dies after it puts fruits out, more, more like an annual. So you have varieties tailored for this kind of systems, you have high environmental control, and if you're using vertical farming, you have a high efficiency in terms of the space that you're using to grow the plants. Like I mentioned earlier, there are some disadvantages or challenges. There's high energy use. There's a lot of investment in terms of equipment, the hardware that you need, and the structure to house these systems to grow in the greenhouse. Uh, and because you have these higher costs from energy and infrastructure, you end up having a limited crop diversity. And the reason why is because there's not a lot of crops that carry a high enough retail price that will justify growing under, under these systems. Last but not least, you can also have a steep learning curve, but once you master some concepts, you might be very successful at managing hydroponic crops. So let's look at the costs for producing crops hydroponically. This is a breakdown of the production costs for leafy greens in the field. That's a pie chart on top and hydroponic grown leafy greens in the pie chart on the bottom. In both systems, labor is a major cost, but in hydroponic systems, sometimes labor costs are higher because you need more qualified labor. Energy cost is a big one in hydroponic systems. It can go anywhere to between 18 to 27% of the production costs. And it, this translates into how much it costs to produce one pound of produce in these kinds of systems relative to field production. So it can go anywhere between two to three times more costly to grow crops in the systems relative to field production. If you want to invest in these kind of systems, uh, these are some rough figures to give you an idea or, or to give you a guidance on how much capital investment you will need. That doesn't mean that you're gonna be spending this, but this is still something that will help you as a guideline. As a rule of thumb, expect to spend anywhere between 15 and $30 per square foot. Um, and this is a table summarizing infrastructure costs for a 30 by 96 structure, uh, either a double layer polyethylene, something simple, to something more complex as arch polyethylene greenhouses. And you also have the cost broken down by the different systems. So this figure includes the greenhouse structure. It also includes the hydroponic system, the hardware that you need to grow the plants and the environmental control. The environmental control is about $10 per square foot on average. And down here we have the average cost per square foot for the different hydroponic systems. These numbers are not set in stone. <laughs> It can change, so please make sure that you call your local supplier for these kind of systems. But these numbers can serve as a guideline of how much you can expect to invest in these kinds of systems. Why is market demand increasing for hydroponic crops? Well, uh, consumers want produce that are very efficient in terms of how much resources they use, in terms of non-renewables like water, soil, and fertilizers, while they preserve the natural ecosystems and biodiversity. They want produce that's grown with less pesticides uh, and with a high nutrition value. And that means that people also want really fresh local produce. And also perceptions around hydroponic crops are evolving. There are some environmental impacts. Like I mentioned earlier, you have lower land requirement because you have higher yields, so you can preserve uh, natural ecosystems. Uh, there's a lower risk of pollution with fertilizer and pesticide runoff and infiltration because you have a contained system where you control where those things are going. You end up using less resources, like I mentioned earlier, less water, less land, and less fertilizers. Um, there's lower use of pesticides. I'm not saying that there's zero use of pesticides. There's some situations where you need to apply pesticides, but it is lower compared to field production. 
it allows you to supply locally sourced foods. So that means that the miles, um, the average pound of produce travels gets reduced significantly, significantly. So that means lower emissions. However, there's a lot of energy use that can be offset a little bit if you use renewable energy sources. And there's a higher dependency on plastics for the production systems. One thing that you have to be aware of is that currently you can grow organic produce that's been grown in hydroponic systems. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the debate is about it. OFPA, which is the Organic Foods Production Act, is the legislation that allows the creation for the National Organic Program. And there's also a National Organic Standards Board that meet and they discuss things that the NOP can vote later on. So since 1995, the NOSB made comments about organic hydroponic labeling, but there was no rule made by the NOP. 2017, they voted to remove aeroponics from the labeling, but the USDA has yet to make a decision on this recommendation. There are many arguments against organic hydroponics, but they mainly refer to the philosophy of building healthier soils, having practices that will allow you to build and keep healthy soil communities. And in March 19, 2021, the court ruled to allow labeling of organic hydroponics because the rule does not specifically prohibit hydroponic operations. So as of now, you can grow organic hydroponic crops. So that was a brief overview of the pros and cons of hydroponic systems. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local field specialist in horticulture.